holy matrimony. Because it's a two-part thing going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Two parts, two parts, two parts. And here's the mystical union of the conscious and the subconscious mind. When you go to sleep, there's something happening between these two faculties of mind. It is the union of the masculine or the conscious mind and the feminine subconscious mind. Therefore, and listen, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. And then Paul goes on to say, this is a great mystery. Now listen carefully. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. So a lot of people think all this time, you probably been thinking it's about a man and a woman getting married and do, doing the woo-wop the bam down the aisle. Read no, Paul said, no, this is a great mystery that I'm speaking of here, but I am speaking concerning Christ. So what are they saying? What are they trying to tell you? There's a union of sorts. See, when you wake up in the morning and you're going about your day and you're walking around in that beta state all day, right? The conscious mind is at the forefront of your endeavors. It is the selective part of the mind. You can say, I want to have this. I want to have that. I like this. I like that. I observe this. I observe that. Right? But then at nighttime, at nighttime, Something happens. There's a deposit that has to be made. The conscious mind makes a deposit into the subconscious mind. And let's be specific, Jew, that good old hippocampus that becomes active when you're going to sleep. It becomes the theta wave comes online as you're drifting off into your twilight sleep. It also is on when you're just waking up in the morning for the first 15 or 20 minutes. Right. So when you practice these things, you it's a feeling. I really can't. I tell this to my members all the time, especially in the morning. I can feel it really heavy in the morning, right? And so then it reminds me of uh, the Old Testament when they say in a cloud descended upon Moses, right? You, you literally feel like you're asleep, but you're not asleep. You're like in between worlds per se, okay? So... And whatever you are depositing into the subconscious is always coming from the conscious mind. This is why you have to be careful and, and scriptures to guard your gates. You have to be careful about what you are allowing into your senses. Because see, a lot of our dreams, people want, why the dreams just so willy nilly and all over the place? I'm going to tell you why. Because there's no conscious directive. You're just allowing all kind of programming to come in from all different uh, facets of life, right? You all, all you got all these conscious dumps coming in. They just dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. And then when you go to sleep at night, you, you, can, it's a must. You have to make the deposit. It's a, literally a transaction taking place. Then when you make that deposit, all of a sudden you're like, man, that dream was weird. I had this thing, this, all of these things. You trying to, you trying to make something, something of it. You think it might be something deep? No, it's all of these different facets that you've allowed to be to enter your gates that are now looking for uh, an amalgamation of sorts to come together to try to produce something for you to make sense of everything that you just processed. But when you become intentional and you wake up the next morning, you start to see like, wait a minute. I know what I deposited last night. And now all of a sudden, people around me are reflecting exactly what I made in my deposit last night intentionally. But let me show you how scripture tells. Let me show, watch this romance. Watch this romance in the Song of Songs of Solomon. Watch how they get down to explain this, this transaction, this passing over of the baton during sleep. It's, listen to this. She says, on my bed, night after night, I sought him who my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. I must arise now and go about the city, in the streets and in the squares. I must seek him who my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. The watchman who makes the rounds in the city found me. And I said, have you seen him who my soul loves? Scarcely had I left 
them when I found him who my soul loves. I held on to him and would not let him go until I brought him to my mother's house and into the room of her who conceived me. This is a beautiful poem to explain the process. At night, as you lay on your bed, people, your lover, your mate, and listen, and everybody got these faculties. Both man and woman got conscious and subconscious mind. So as you are laying on your bed at night, guess who's coming to look for you? Guess who's getting up, looking and pacing down the streets? Trying to see, where's my lover? Where have you been all day, my love? You've been out ripping and running the streets? What have you observed today? Come on into these chambers. Come on into this to your mama's house where the conception will take place. Huh? See, listen, people. Listen. It's no different. It's just, listen, it's just like the sperm in the egg cell, people. The sperm cell got all the data packed, locked, and loaded. The egg cell is passive in her nature. She's waiting to be impressed upon. Hmm? She's waiting to be impressed upon. Upon. But see, what does scripture tell us? And I like to use these vivid examples because it helps you identify because we, we can see these things in the world. It's called the children that you have. It's called biology class. It's called sex ed. Huh? Huh? Now watch this now. This Romans 1 and 20. Because I want to show y'all. Ain't no secrets out here. It says, for the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal Godhead and power, so that they are without excuse. So what is this, what is this verse trying to tell you? You want to know how the invisible mind of God works? You want to know the faculties of the subconscious mind? You want to know how to get down and busy with the technology that you've been built with? Look to nature. Look to the things that are clearly made visible. Because then you'll be able to see how these things work on these realms of invisibility or mind so that you can replicate a result. Huh? Right? So, there is a set of behavioral genes that are turned on while dreaming. L listen carefully. Behavioral genes. That's big. Changing who you are. So your behavior is who you are. Hmm. So if we know that we can encode ourselves if we know that this is an inside job, right? Then that means once we start to do this conscientiously, excuse me, we will start to change and upregulate the proper genes, downregulate the proper genes, so that our behavior change, our perception changes, our habits change, the repetitious things that we do begin to change. And now you start to literally vibrate in the being that you say that you want to be. It doesn't happen any other way. You have to get down in the subconscious mind and hack that thing. And this ain't no one hit or quitter. It ain't, oh, I'm going to do it tonight, and then I ain't going to do it no more next week, and then I may be picked. It don't work that way. Here's the kicker, though. They are also turned on when we experience stress. So it's always a, a spectrum or a balancing act to understand how to program oneself. 
So what does this mean? If you imagine you are all that you watching all the bad news, you listen to all this, whatever you listen to, and it's causing you to be stressed. Guess what's happening? These same genes are getting cut on in a detrimental way while you're sleeping. So there's a function going on in the hippocampus that is either being used for us or against us, depending on how we approach reality and circumstances. Hmm. You see? So. So. The studies show that subjective states of awareness, when consciously activated, motivate our behavior and our perceptions. P. A. Rossi, PhD, the psychobiology of gene expression. So now it ain't just about, oh man, how deep was my dream last night? That's cool too. That's cool. But get into the habit of learning how to do what? Program yourself to take with you what you would like down into your lover's domain so that she can take you into the house where you will be conceived. That's the strategy. That's the methodology. When you do that, you're trust me, you're going to benefit tremendously. Because so let me tell you something. Listen, and this whole thing about choice. Listen, you got a choice about what you're going to observe. You do. You got a choice. You could choose. So scripture tell you, um, you know, it says, choose this day who you will serve verbatim. So you have to choose what it is that you're going to observe because that's what you're serving. And then they go on to tell you, but choose life. So it's really up to us because the conscious mind, you have control over what you're, what, what you're going to allow into the gates of your mind. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The moment it gets crossed over to the subconscious, it's over with. You all your control, it's it's a, it's a done deal. You think you woke up this morning a free agent, don't you? You think you <laughs> walked out of that door and everything was under your own conscious will and volition. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Teach. Listen. Teach. The subconscious mind is dictating the events of the day. Yes. Yes. Now you can choose how you respond to it mm. with the template that already been set. It's been set. So for you to try to listen, trying to trying to trying to work with the objective world first is an exercise in futility. You, 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 there you go bumping your head up against a brick wall. Trust me when I tell you, you working backwards. If you're going to change something, you have to change the rearrangement of what you've placed in the subconscious mind. And I'm speaking literally here. I want y'all to understand. I want you to, we're going to bring it back down to Mount Coop. We're going to bring it back down to earth. Listen, I'm talking about in your Olympic brain, how you're feeling, what you're thinking and the images that you are processing in that bad boy. Because that is what's going to dictate who shows up, what shows up tomorrow. Right? So, Scripture will tell you like this, Job 33, 15 through 16, in a dream, oh boy, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Emphasis on seals their instruction. You're going to march to the drum that was placed down in this portion of your being. That's them, those, those your marching orders, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? So, so let's see, Jew, what we got. So, and this speaks to the people that you meet the day of Genesis 28, 16. Jacob awakened out of his sleep. There we go. 
Huh? There they go. Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely Yahweh is in this place. And I didn't know it. Oh, we know. Listen, when you unconscious and let me tell y'all something too. Let me listen, 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 listen. You're using this anyway. Whether you're consciously using it or not, you are. Listen, scripture tells you that scripture tells you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a, that's a fact. Let me tell you something. You're using this power every single day, whether you're conscientiously using it or not. You couldn't get away from it if you tried. You're made this way. You like it's it's it comes with the packaging. So when what are they saying? What is this state called Jacob trying to alert you to? When you wake up in God or Yahweh or substitute whatever did to you like is surely in this place. And I didn't know it. It is already preparing the circumstances in the environment. Soon as you come out that slumber. Right. And me and Aunt Poo be having these conversations and he'd be like, Jew, man, I don't like this, man. We be laughing. He'd be like, Jew, you know what that means? And I'd be like, yeah, I know exactly what it means. No, that means that this thing was already set. Because, see, what happens is you start to get these synchronicities or these winks, as they call it, while you're moving about your day that only gives confirmation to that and what you've been focusing and thinking about anyway. Right? So. We know we got these involuntary muscles, right, Rich? We got the heart. Listen, you go to sleep at night, the heart's still pumping, baby. The lungs still expanding and contracting, baby. The nerves is still nerving. The brain is still working. Oh, yeah. Every, now, listen. Look, imagine this. Think about it this way. The subconscious mind is just like these involuntary muscles. It's always at work. Without you consciously having to part, play part and parcel to it, it's popping. So it says, listen to this. When we awake from our sleep, where the self-conscious programming, well, excuse me, whether with self-conscious programming or the data presented to our senses randomly throughout the day, we are not free agents during our two-thirds waking phase of the day. Our subconscious programs dictate how reality shows up on a screen of space called 3D. We actually overestimate how little control the conscious mind has on our behaviors and actions. Is Drew making this up? No. Unconscious modulation of conscious experience of voluntary control. K. Linzer and T. Gosh, Cognition, 2007. You see? So once you understand this, it will, listen, you, you will want tonight, but let me tell y'all something. Y'all should be so excited. Listen, I'd be excited when I'm teaching this, man. Let me tell you something. I done seen what people call miracles happen regularly around these parts. That's why I'm so enthusiastic. Because you know how bad I want people to experience this thing for themselves? My whole tenure of teaching has just been to help other people for 10 years. I'm, I'd be more excited for people than they be for themselves. But when you watch this, you should you you should want to go to bed immediately at like tonight. You should you should you can't wait to get to sleep so that you can go find your lover. 